All right, so everybody's sitting here. Um, I think we're going to bend the rules a little and start a little early. Uh, this is, we're, I'm going to open the hearing for um, a continuation under RGFA, site plan approval for um, 33 Saddle Hill Road. Um, and I think who's going to be handling the presentation tonight? I am. All right. If you could just give us a, a, a sense of what we are going to be uh, reviewing tonight, uh, and then um, introduce the, t the members of the team that are going to be making the presentation, that would be great. If we keep the presentation to 20 minutes or so, or, or less, then that would give us a few minutes for board comments, and then we'd open the discussion to the floor. Um, so there, there will be no presentation from the team tonight. Oh, okay, there won't be. Uh, my name is Brian Levy. I'm the attorney for the uh, applicant. And with me tonight is um, Jay Bassani, and his family is also standing in the back of the room. And the entire project team is also here as well for any of the questions that you may have. All right, I just saw all the consultants, so I thought maybe you had a presentation. No, we don't. Um, Perhaps you, what they could do then, because it, it's been a while since we reviewed the project, if you could briefly recapitulate where, where we are in, in, the, in, the, um, in the proposal, that would be helpful. Yeah, well, basically what has happened is that the application was filed uh, five months ago in May. And uh, when we were last before you uh, on July 15th, we showed you a substantially revised plan, uh, which is the site plan is in front of you here today. Um, and so that plan has been pending in front of the board for, for six weeks now, and there's, there's no changes. Uh, we sent in an email the other day noting two uh, minor uh, changes, a total of a 25 square foot change um, in the RGFA. So the net decrease in the RGFA in the house from the original to the post proposed, uh, we've shrunk the house by about 1,700 uh, square feet. Uh, there also, uh, what is this? What is the RGFA? The Carol? total number now is uh, 677 plus 25. Uh, 6,702 square feet. Where, just out of curiosity, where was the extra 25 feet added? We uh, added two inches to the thickness of the stone veneer on the outside of the okay. building, and that, that, that added to 25 feet. Okay. So, so, so we changed the layout. Yeah, we went from four inches to six. Right. There, there are no changes in the plans except to that material, uh, which caused a 25 uh, square foot change in the RG, RGFA. Uh, and there were also a change to a couple of the light fixtures so that there was a change in the lumen count by about 100. 75 uh, lumen. So it's the same plan that's been before you with the reduced RGFA, with the reduced height, with the reduced length, uh, with the change in materials, all of those changes being made after hearing the various comments from the board um, and the public. Um, at uh, 6.30 tonight, I received about seven emails uh, from the Butters uh, Council with a uh, report from two arborists, one landscape architect, one architect, one environmental, one environmental engineer, and one neurologist. Uh, so this was all laid on us a couple hours ago, notwithstanding the fact that the plan hasn't changed for six weeks. So the idea is to have this board delay the proceedings once again by filing materials uh, at the last minute we would ask that you not do that. There's nothing that's changed, nothing material, between when we saw you on July 15th and standing here on September 2. It's the same plan. Uh, <clears throat> if I could briefly address the comments that were made in those materials, um, the topics that are addressed by the arborist have already been peer reviewed. Basically, what they're looking for is a tree protection plan such that all of the sort of the forest area behind the richest house and the area outside of the limit of work is 
orange line here is the limit of work for the project, which extends from the property line, basically between 50 feet and 30 feet off the property. It's a no-touch zone. We can't go in there for any purpose. And this tree protection plan <clears throat> calls for pruning, fertilizing, fencing, signage, uh, strapping bands to trees, a four-inch layer of wood chips, uh, the irrigation over this area where there are 21 white pine trees on uh, Rich's property and the area in the, in the no-touch zone. So uh, clearly things that uh, are, are unnecessary. Weston does not require that type of tree protection. We have a line which delineates the work, which we cannot go past. We don't know of any historical evidence in the town of Weston that that limit of work line doesn't work and that if a tree is on the other side of that line, it falls over. Uh, there's just no evidence uh, to support that, and all of this has been uh, peer reviewed already. The landscape architect has, uh, Kathy Schreiber has added her comments, uh, critiquing the, the plan. You've had your project, you've had this uh, plan critiqued already by uh, your landscape architect consultant. Uh, we've complied with her request, we've made the changes that she's asked for, uh, and so the, the the town's consultant is content with the plan. Uh, Ms. Schreiber concludes by saying what we should do, move the house. Move the house and create a line, uh, a wall of arborvitae behind the house, a non-native plant species, which typically does not happen in Weston. So we reject those requests as well. The architect has proposed basically what he proposed last time, uh, substantial design changes, project has already been substantially redesigned. It's a handsome looking house. There's no need to change it again. The materials have been changed. The size have been changed. The length of it has been changed. So there's no need to make further changes. This is my client's house. It is not being built by others. And they've already made numerous changes in response to comments. Uh, the other issue raised by the architect is the shadow study. Uh, we provided that study. Uh, I don't believe we had any comments back from the board that they had any concerns with it. The differential in the shadowing is minimal. The worst days of the year, the additional shadowing is the delta of the additional shadowing on the property, the abutting property, not on the abutting house, but on the property. The biggest delta is about an hour and 15 minutes. And those are for the very few worst days of the year. So we believe we comply with the standard in the bylaw. There's also a letter from Norse Environmental, which was sent to me uh, this evening. That uh, letter addresses drainage. You've already had your peer review consultant review and approve the drainage. It addresses the purported stream on the abutting property. That is a subject of the Conservation Commission and DEP proceedings. It's not within your jurisdiction. The last letter that was submitted was by a neurologist uh, on behalf of the uh, riches uh, with regard to their daughter. And what we have to say about that is this. We have looked back uh, at the history of building permits that have been issued in this neighborhood since 2000. There have been no conditions put on any of those permits since 2000. And that includes a building permit that was issued for a home which was diagonally across the street from the riches house. No permit conditions whatsoever, limiting hours of operation. Well, we don't have any reason to believe that this house, which is being built so far away and so far up the hill from that house, is going to cause any undue harm to that house at all. Um, so in addition, there's no certainty at all that there's going to be a lot of blasting that takes place on this property. The blasting, the extent of blasting will be determined when the, when the trucks are on the property and we're, we're looking at the earth and pulling it up and seeing what needs to be done. So we don't know to what extent, if any, there will be blasting. But if there is blasting, there are certain state requirements that we have to meet, which we know, which we will meet. There have been blasting in other projects in Weston, which have been done quite successfully. This blasting that goes on in operating hospitals. You know that the planning board has a blasting protocol. We will follow. Um, so there shouldn't be an issue there. The request that the work start no earlier than 9 o'clock is basically 
an attempt to stop the project because you can't find a contractor who's going to come to the property and start work at 9 o'clock. That's just not a practical reality. So uh, for those reasons, we would say we should be allowed to have normal operating conditions on the site. Uh, we're not familiar with the board imposing that kind of draconian uh, condition on the hours of operation for uh, construction. And we see no need to do it because we're no different than any other construction that went on in this neighborhood which had no conditions on it. So we're hopeful that the board tonight will look past this last minute attempt, this barrage of information which is being thrown at the board, notwithstanding that the plans are six weeks old, and uh, vote to close the hearing. All right. Um, rather than, I'll change the order of the meeting a little bit, R rather than comments from the board, uh, based on your introduction, I think it's probably better at this point if we ask for comments from uh, the members of, of the audience uh, who, who may wish to make them. Uh, does anybody want to speak? Yes, could you just identify yourself, please? Of course, and I'm not quite sure where to stand in relation to the camera. Um, um, I'm going to sit down very quickly because of the beginning of yeah, I'll turn to both of you. Okay, Sorry. No, no, I just don't need to be rude. Um, I'm going to turn this over to the experts um, who are here to provide you additional paper copies provided already of their reports and to beg you to treat them seriously. They put huge amounts of time into getting them professional excellence. The delay is not a tactic. The delay, in fact, is caused by exactly what my colleague and I agree on. There has been no change. And pretty much the day after the last meeting, we sent correspondence to the proponents' council and got no answer at all, except I'll, I'll answer. Got no answer at all until if maybe a week ago, if that, if that, and the answer could have dramatically changed the scope of each of these experts' work product. So enough for me about um, the reasons for delay, for which I, I'm sorry, but it's because nothing's changed. And my fundamental statement um, about the whole thing is one doesn't re reward a terrible start for a project by then approving it because they've made a less worse proposal. You have an excellent Bible. And as I read it, I get 16 separate violations of that Bible. And they're in my written remarks, so I'll provide you those. I won't read them all now. 16 separate violations of the Bible. The people you're going to hear from are Norse Environmental, um, Steve Erickson. I may have to speak for him because he may not get here on time. Um, HDS architect Keith Gross will go first. Um, Catherine Schreiber um, and uh, Carl Cathart will be spoken for by Terrence here. Um, and the neurologist letter, we didn't call the neurologist in, but it's a bit offensive here. The young woman was not ill three years ago. So if there was no building permit in the area, current conditions, she didn't need it. She has an IEP right now, and her privacy doesn't merit uh, details on this, but if you see the letter, which you will be given, the neurologist letter, this is a serious medical matter. The requests for the time are part of her IEP and part of the neurologist's um, come to. Um, I don't agree with the characterizations of our experts' reports. I suggest um, the only fair thing to do, since they take up the time at every one of the previous meetings, is read them. It's worth it, um, and we'd be happy to propose alternative decisions um, rather than have you spend time discussing the decision tonight. Um, so I turn it over to Keith Gross, yeah. Yeah. Keith Gross, HDS Architects. Did you uh, print out of all the, the report and the attachments that I uh, had referenced? Yeah. <laughs> start. You must be an architect. Yeah. <laughs> Plans are dry. 
Probably just got it in water. Can you have another copy? No, this is fine. That's all right. Well, John's getting you paper towels. I'll give you the paper copies of um, what I would have said. Should I just wait for John? Yeah. All right, give me that. Sorry. <coughs> oh, I'm going right. to. Does anybody else want their copy now while they're ready? Sure. Each person is going to give you a paper copy since the electronic. submit our findings until uh, very recently is that we were expecting there to be changes. Because there are very serious um, violations of the zoning bylaw. In particular, the one that's most egregious is the shading uh, from the house on the adjacent property. Um, I know the shadow study, which is on the uh, <coughs> third pages with some highlights, shows the number of hours that um, the property is shaded. And it's important to point out that the current shading is primarily from a one-story barn that's 20 by 20 that does cast shadows onto the property. Whereas the proposal for the large house will cast a much bigger shadow for a much longer period of time. So it's a very significant uh, difference, and I think that's very worthwhile to, to consider. Um, and would be cause, I think, for <clears throat> asking for a redesign to take that mass away from the edge of the hill, which you know, the house is built very close. So the two-story part of the house that's next to that hill is blocking the, the light that currently comes under the, under the upper story of the trees. You know, they do get daylight that comes through the, the trunks. It's all white pine, so there's very little way of branches down low. So this house will block a lot of that. So it's, it's not just a difference of an hour or so a, a day. It's a significant blockage of a great more light than, than currently is happening. Um, so we were expecting to see some changes that would reflect that concern. And I've got bullet points here of the things that we've um, found that are, that are issues. Primarily, it is the, the shading, which can be alleviated by modifying the design. It made a good first start, but as my uh, very brief sketches, I looked at this the last time I showed, that there are some basic changes that could be done to at least get rid of the, the higher part of the house. And um, ideally, we'd like to see the house pulled further away so that there's no shading at all. The other issue was the mechanical equipment, which there are several uh, noise generators that are placed right next to the uh, to the edge of the <coughs> the hill, which will impact uh, 77 Pinecroft more than any other neighbors, and we'd like to see those somehow shielded and shape, uh, removed so that they're maybe on top of the building. Um, and then the the last issue was about the, the lighting you know, at night. There is currently you know, no lights that come into the, the, the neighbor's yards or into the open space that's uh, part of the conservation plan. And with this house, um, particularly facing to the east, there's about a thousand square feet of open glass. And even the smallest number of lights on inside the house will project light out onto the property. <coughs> And the, you know, the 
bylaw doesn't limit your purview to exterior lights. It talks about uh, unreasonable glare and uh, blah, 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 other public ways, which would include the adjacent conservation land. So I think that's a, a concern that you know, should be addressed by the, by the planning board as well. So you know, in summary, it's you know, proposed house as designed presented last meeting should not be approved as present design as it violates so many provisions of the bylaw. <coughs> Quick question, Ian. Yeah. Um, we saw your sketches yeah. last time. Um, you, you. At that time, I think you were. We had the question: if if the changes were made as you suggest here, what would be the reduction in, in the area? I don't think you knew the answer to that question. No, then. I didn't follow up to figure that out. I, mean, I don't have. Um, these are just very rough sketches. I can answer that they we asked for the computer model to be able to do the shadowing study and see. Um, oh, it's not about the shadowing study. <laughs> I, I understand about the, the issues there. It's about the, the area of the house that would result in the reductions that Keith is proposing. Uh, the RG, RGFA reduction. Yeah, I think the primary reduction is on that first floor where the rooms are pulled in, and that would be maybe about 100. <laughs> Um, because the second floor area was just relocated to a different part of the house, so that was still the same um, overall area as in the previous design. Yeah. So really it's just okay. you know, moving the house over, shrinking a few rooms to pull the, the edge further away. And of course, you know, there's certainly lots of other design options. This was just one kind of thing. Lots of other ways that this house could be designed so that it has minimal no impact on, on the neighboring property. Right. Okay. Okay. Can someone answer how much of the art is in the shadow during these periods? Pardon? How much? What percent of the backyard of the other house has shadow on it during this time period? Best thing is to look at the diagrams that we we uh, made available to everybody. But the. Um, this is the fall winter shadow study. And the, uh, the, the actual shadow is the blue, is the dark blue. Uh, so um, this is in the, um, uh, in the fall and winter, and I mean in the uh, darker parts of the year. And uh, during the lighter six months of the year, the, um, the house cast a, a very, very small shadow, uh, basically over the, this corner of the property. But you can see in relationship, the primary shadows that are cast on the property uh, are cast by the existing trees and all the, all the vegetation that's there, and also by the hill that, you know, the reality is that the richest house is in the bottom of the ravine, and there are a lot of natural features that cast that house into shadow. You can see from the, um, uh, especially due to the redesign of the house, which we did uh, before the last hearing, the, the, the blue, the blue that you see is actually the, the additional new shadow that is cast by this property on the house. Keith, I'm sorry, Keith has asked me to yeah. answer that question more succinctly. Um, it's almost two hours, almost year round. The, the extent, but the, the area. The entire backyard shadows. and into the house, and in, including the pool, including the entire backyard is in a yes. shadow because of the new house. Yes, because times, yes. Because, times, yes. And over the pool and over the house. And another point that needs to be emphasized is the shadowing is caused by um, the current presence has canopy light going through it. The house then prevents that canopy light from going through. Thank you. The only thing I'd just um, add to that is simply this, this drawing that we submitted last time that shows um, the size of the uh, new house um, in relationship to the existing um, uh, tree line. And uh, it's basically this area right here that's in contention. And in, in, if we were to adopt, um, consider uh, the other architect's plan, the only thing that would go away would be this piece right here. So uh, it's really that small area right there that, that seems to be the crux of your choice. It was just one option, but certainly a lot more. Well, but it, it, you're, you're recommending 
the change that the changes in your sketches that you that you've appended to your report, correct? No, I'm showing that there's at least one example of a way that the house could be modified and still maintain the same sorts of spaces that have less impact. And there's certainly much more um, design options that could be done. And you know, Marcus is a creative architect. I'm sure he would come up with. Well, two of us are architects sitting at this table. Yeah. You know, we both think that the, that the modifications that you showed us bring the house in at under the RGFA trigger. Is that is that your is that what you're suggesting? If it would lessen the shadows on the on the property, I, I didn't even know it came under that. We didn't discuss yeah, it. I mean, we don't know that. That right. changes the ball game, you know. I understand completely. Show us. We didn't calculate it that way. It was about meeting the bylaw. Yeah. It still has to meet bylaws, even if it's under the trigger. No, no it's, it's it, it, We're out of the game then. It, Perhaps this discussion for a different day. We're, we're, not, we're not saying this is the only way to do it, but if this is the way to do it and it does result in that much change in the um, residential growth. Well, what area, do you want us to consider? I mean, is this something you're proposing or? It is an example. An we're example proposing. of how to get under the trigger. Uh, respectfully, it's an example, one example of how they could avoid the shadowing and avoid the impacts of, as required by the bylaw. Um, I'm sure there are others. I'm sure this is a rough sketch uh, compared to what other capable architects could do. And this is not the time to be discussing what could happen um, and what they would still have to do. The I just want to know what we're supposed to be, you know, he, here's, here's a document we've just been handed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what are we to take from the document? That there are other feasible ways of minimizing the impacts. The language of the bylaw is clear. It and they have the which impacts the shadow the shadowing, the shadowing. Um, and we'll get to it with the other three experts um, about the safety issues of the shadowing it is simply false that Weston doesn't regulate trees if it's off site you can't be creating a safety hazard of tall trees falling because they've been destabilized so the rest of the folks will speak to that then but and it, even the bylaw doesn't do away with that liability and concern nobody should be issuing a building permit that is going to cause that safety risk so I think the other experts should speak to that better than I could. Yeah. Okay. And I just want to say, you have the <coughs> facts <coughs> about the increased shadowing. The proponent's attorney said an hour and 15 minutes. That's just not true to their own calculations. It's closer to two hours a day in perpetuity. So forever, we lose daylight savings, not only on our property, but in our house. The bylaw says, where feasible, you shall not shadow another person's property. It shadows our property and our main living space. And it's not necessary. Plus the glare on the public space and the okay. Now next we had, um, if I may, you can introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Kathy Schreiber, landscape architect. Um, my primary concern was the degree of screening between the northeast wall of the house and the richest house. And what's proposed on the plan and also shown in section is four trees and uh, how many? 57 shrubs, um, uh, Catawba rhododendrons, which require sun, and inkberry, which becomes very leggy and really neither of them can be in the dense shade which they're, they're placed in under the canopy of white pines, planted right under the trunks of white pines and in the shade of the house. And then there are two Norway spruce and two American holly. And this is a big house. And when you stand out of the richest property and you look up and imagine that house being there, with all that glass and all that light, to me, it needs a much heavier screening, which we have done on other properties in town. You know, staggered evergreens and deciduous trees and another layer of shrubs. You know, we've, we've done that to satisfy abutters on various other properties. So I think because of the scale of the house and because um, of what it's gonna do at night when the lights are on, my suggestion only was that we really can't be planting within the root systems of the existing trees that are at the top of the hill. So if this house were moved back so that we're not impacting those root systems and we could plant trees that could take that kind of shade, and a lot of them, it would make a big difference for, for the riches. But right now, four trees and a bunch of little shrubs, when you look at the section that the architects provide, it's just so insignificant. 
And because I've been on projects where we really have beefed up and done heavy screening for abutters and met with every single abutter, you know, they're in their bathroom and I'm on the phone and we're moving trees so that their views are protected, it seems that in this case that should be required as well because of the size of the house and the impact on the ridges. So that was, that's my primary comment for this. And also the conservation trails and, and everything. When you're on that site, it seems to me, as I walked, you know, I just was looking at them that there's a meadow and that this house is sort of hanging on the edge of this, of the hill. Why not have it be in more of the open space that's already there? I, I don't really understand why it's pushed so far up against, you know, right at the crest of the hill. So it seemed to me that there certainly could be modifications made in terms of place. <coughs> okay. okay. about a 60 foot slope, I mean a 60% slope coming up here. Um, there is only about 30 feet from the, from the rock wall here to the, you know, the current area of where the buffer zone is going to be as far as the building of this house. So when I walked on the property back here, I noticed right off the bat there's 21 very large white pine trees that range in height from 85 to 110 feet. They're growing pretty much on a ledge. Um, if you look in the, uh, my plan, you'll see in the back there are some pictures. One of them I have the arrows that actually point to the ledge, the rock. The soil um, is very thin there. The trees are basically very tall. They're growing on a slope. And their roots are pretty much growing in the crevices of the rocks to maintain their hold in the um, topography. So the big thing that I've seen in the past with construction sites is when you start initiating any type of blasting, you're going to be shaking and creating um, a compromise to the existing topography and rock structures that are already there. With the you know, reduced amount of soil that these very large white pine trees are already growing in, um, my fear is that if you start to compromise the soil structure and this topography, that you are going to loosen the structure, loosen the hold that these trees currently have on the slope. And in a matter of three to 10 years, you're going to see a result of this disruption in topography. Uh, if I lived in Mrs. Rich's house, I would be concerned down the road as to what could possibly happen to the health of the trees that are there now as far as falling or uprooting, coming over, which is why up in this area here, I was very concerned about a tree protection plan to do you know, a, a more thorough job at protecting the area behind the construction of this home. So this area can stay more intact as well as hopefully maybe protecting the trees down the road a little bit. But the biggest concern that I do see is just the overall disturbance. You've got construction vehicles, you've got, you know, um, just major impact, you know, daily travel, blasting um, applications of various types. 
Um, and you really are going to disrupt the current topography and environmental conditions that are currently in that site right now. It's a long-term projection. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Not right now. We'll, we'll get the comments. Okay. Your engineer. Yes, one more environmental that I'll have to skim through, but um, Mr. Rich will do his. You want me to go? All right, I'll do mine here. Um, uh, pretend I'm Steve Erickson. Um, he'll do a uh, much nicer job than I would if you would mind passing it down. Um, I'm going to summarize this and he apologizes. Um, it was an unexpected uh, addition here. Um, he lists not um, quite what my colleague described. He addresses stormwater um, for planning board issues and names one, two, three, four, five, six, seven separate violations of the stormwater guidelines, which are yours um, as, as part of several things. There's the Town of Weston's erosion control requirements, plus when the Conservation Commission approved their order, it was the express agreement from the people present on the proponents team, on the record, that, that, that you, the planning board, would oversee compliance with the DEP stormwater guidelines. So there are seven separate violations listed in his letter of what they are. I won't belabor them, uh, but they're his technicalities um, from the guidelines that result in exactly the things that the other experts have been talking about. Destabilization, erosion, sedimentation, um, and issues concerning um, the stormwater, which is part of your jurisdiction. Uh, the second piece he speaks to is indeed the stream, um, the one that was not known when they first came to you. They didn't notice, didn't look over the slope, didn't pay attention down there. Uh, people do make mistakes, so they corrected it quickly and went to the Conservation Commission and got a very speedy order, which is on appeal to the, to the Department of Environmental Protection. Still pending. There is no final order. They cannot um, build what they have because the DEP is taking seriously whether there's a 200-foot setback, not a 100-foot setback. I was not present for that site visit. This is what the gentleman who is reporting to you um, has told me. Um, and. If there is a 200-foot setback, it obviously affects many other issues on the site besides the 100-foot buffer zone that you looked at the last time. Um, and even with the 100-foot buffer zone, there's problems with the infiltration system located in that area. The third thing he talks about is trees, slope, and impacts below. He has concerns about tree cutting and destabilization of the slope that you've already heard about, probability of exposing roots by erosion of the soil from all the activity you've heard about, and he talks about um, increased change runoff and how that affects the vegetation. Uh, plus, finally, as I said, the infiltration system impacts. Uh, the construction would inevitably, inevitably require machines and excavation within just the 100-foot buffer zone, not to mention the 200-foot. But there were no calculations or conditions um, included to address those impacts yet, so they're expecting the planning board uh, to look into that. Plus, uh, Title V requires venting. It um, seems appropriate. While well, you don't usually do Title V, um, the minimum setbacks um, are not present when they're supposed to be, as he's noticed. Um, and the out outlet to the foundation drain is between the septic tank and the absorption fields. And it appears to redirect the normal direction of ground flow to that area, which given the slopes um, is an issue for runoff calculations. So our expert is concerned about that and perhaps yours <coughs> take another look. We were surprised not to see recalculations between July and now. Um, so that summarizes what Norris Environmental Services. Um, I am hereby Steve Erickson sitting down. All right. Hi, I'm Jack Rich, 77 Pinecroft Road. Um, I've been here before. Uh, thank you for listening to what I have to say. Um, at prior, at the first hearing, there was a mention of earth removal special permit requirements, and it's not yet answered whether those uh, re um, requirements apply. So we still don't know that. Um, no construction management plan has been submitted. I noticed recently on the landscape plan that it's showing trees being retained that are inside the orange tape and not wrapped with orange, so they're marked for removal, and yet on the landscape plan they're showing a stain, so that affects, of course, more disruption and protection for these uh, tall pines at the top of the hill. Um, 
there are an infinite number of sizes and shapes of houses you can design. And on a big square lot, you can put most of them. And on a tiny or odd-shaped lot, you can only build a few of them. And at 33 Saddle Hill Road, where a square lot, you could move this house further from the hill, and there'd be no problem. Or if it were flat and we were level with it, it would probably be no problem. But 33 Saddle Hill is not square and not flat. It's a very peculiar shape that strongly limits the size and shape of houses you can build there. And this particular house is, because of its size and shape, is forced right back to the hill next to us. It's uh, 34, 35 feet above grade in the back where it's uh, by our hill. It is up on a 40 foot hill. It's seven stories above our backyard and pool and finished basement. And six stories above the top floor of our house, which is the main living area. And it is due south of us. All our view of sky and can under the canopy of trees from the yard, it, it's just, it's horrifying actually. Um, so I'm wondering why we're still here discussing this. This is a perfect example of a size and shape house and a size and shape lot that don't fit. It causes zoning uh, bylaw violations. And this house, if they're enamored of it, I think it's a lovely house myself, but it needs a different lot. It can't go on this lot. And if they like this lot, it needs a much different house that fits in the shape of this house. And I just urge you to say, send them back to a, design a new house, because it can't go on 33 Saddle Hill. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Yes, sir? Um, I'm 44 Saddle Hill, so I'm up above, the Woodward tonight above. And uh, Brian Lee said, you know, this should be normal operating procedure. Uh, the planning board's been up there. It's a single lane road, and the fire hydrant for the neighborhood is above the house. Uh, there needs to be a building construction plan, time schedule. Uh, otherwise, the Woodward's and I are, are going to be stuck there when we need to get our kids to school. And the, the access up there to the fire hydrant would be uh, a hazard to, to the whole neighborhood. Construction vehicles won't be parking in the street. I mean, that's a, that's a standard condition. Right, but we, we had talked about there being a building plan and times when they would drop things off that would be a scheduling plan. A scheduling plan. And, yeah. and yeah. right, that we could ask for that right. to be submitted. Any other comments from them? Yes. I'm Catherine Lockenauer, uh, representing my <coughs> family live at 27 Saddle Hill Road, so the butters on, uh, on the other side. And uh, we would just like to emphasize our concern with the light emission from very large on the walls of class. We have brought that up at the last meeting and I haven't had any particular response to that concern. But that was, as I recall, right at the, within, within that, that series of changes. And, and it's, that, that will be a big impact among many other things that have been mentioned. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm Carl Cathcart. I'm the uh, Arborist Karen uh, worked with me on and uh, knows my uh, resume. I've worked in this field for 65 years and I've worked all over the United States, Florida, uh, not Florida, I'm sorry, <laughs> Chicago, uh, California, Maine, New Hampshire, and everywhere. They took a lot of different projects and I'm very concerned about this slope. I'm very concerned about the trees falling within a minimum of time. I, I do a lot of tree uh, risk assessment program for towns, other people, and so on. And you've got breaking uh, stone, a uh, ledge like this, fracturing, you're going to run into trouble. I don't care what type of house you put up here. You've got fracturing all the soil, blasting. These trees may not die right off. And it's also a certain blasting material that you different types that actually toxic to the roots. The other thing I see is where they have the leech field on the left side. They're going to put that in. They're going to destroy another section of the root system. They're going to have an uh, area where they're going to be coming around. I they haven't seen a tree yard yet. 
meaning that, I don't know if you're in a tree yard, you must, you've never seen it, where the trucks are going to be coming in and out to deliver supplies to the house or, or take debris out. You have to have an area where they put all that uh, debris in so they can pick it up, not keep running all over the lot. You've got to have steel plates down, as we've said in my report. You've got to have uh, wash gravel in there underneath that. Just putting steel plates down doesn't make it down a bit different. It crushes the roots still. You've got to have something that's up high that it settles on if you're going to do this. I cannot see this really helping any type of thing that everybody's going to do on the site to help those trees. And it's a very concerning to me. We work as a team, and I told them, and they outdated all the project, and they needed to. We've done our research. I've been involved in these and seeing trees die from construction five years later. I mean, construction, the last thing, even sooner, up in the North Shore, on the big estate. 12 inch old trees. They just die because your, your root system on trees don't just go to the drip line, they go three times beyond. You know, these trees, been, they didn't work planting and You can have a hard time planting trees on this area, even. You have to bring in a lot of soil, and you have to run equipment over to bring it in. And then you're damaging roots again. And this whole thing, to me, absolutely, you're looking for a disaster down the road. So if you want to put the laws in there and say the tree dies within 10 years, then, then the other side liable. Because that's what's going to happen. And I'm sorry to say, you know, we've got to supply you all the other um, backup information I'm talking about that's written about construction. And that's one of the biggest problems second biggest problem in the United States and anywhere else in the world is construction. And this is where they have room to do construction, you know? Thank and you. the trees to grow in. Thank it's you. crazy, you know? To me, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry for these people, but this is totally outrageous to kill these trees. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, any, anyone else? It's a tough act to follow. You want to <laughs> right, give it a try? <laughs> a simple process question. Uh, Rob Bachner, 27 Saddle Hill. The, the escrow for the repaving of the road of Saddle Hill, where is that recorded? Or? It's going to be, yeah, it would be a condition. It's a condition. A decision. And a planning board decision. Okay. Um, any, anyone else? All right. Okay. Yes? So I'm Alice Rich, 77 Pinecroft. You've heard me before. Um, I just have to speak up about what Attorney Levy. Um, it's hard for me to talk about because he made assumptions about our child being sick when the Cobb's house was built. She wasn't sick. There didn't need to be conditions on ours. She's sick now. You have the letter from her doctor, and we're asking for these hours to be conditioned to maintain the dignity and health of a teenager who's trying to finish high school and trying to survive. For him to compare this to construction that happened six years ago when she was a perfectly healthy straight-A student is mean, it's wrong, and I just can't let him say that without putting something on the record. And I would ask you to read the letter from her doctor. This is here and now. This isn't when the cops built their house. When the cops built their house, they came to every neighbor and asked about the impact of their construction. We have had no communication with this homeowner. We asked for communication. They ignored us for five weeks. But Attorney Levy, how dare you speak to my daughter's medical condition when you didn't know her medical condition, you have no knowledge of her medical condition. This is her medical condition now. You have a record from her neurologist, and I can get you as many records as you need. Thank you. Can I, can I just say something about that? Um, <clears throat> I, 
I was a migraine sufferer myself for many years, so I know what it's like. Okay. There's there's a ray of hope. It, it's, many times, it, in my case, it, it gradually diminished and it, it's virtually disappeared now. So she she may get better as she gets older. Thanks. Just wanted to let you know that. Um, any other comments? All right, here's what we're faced with. Um, we have an, an avalanche of information here. Um, what, what, what is the board's sentiment about this, about where we are, and, and what do you think our uh, next um, actions should be? I throw the floor open. I'm presuming that next week's agenda is totally full. I, I think we can shuffle it. <clears throat> because there is a lot of material to absorb here. But I think there's also something that people have to keep in mind, and that is that the planning board only has limited powers in terms of what we can do and what we can condition on this. And I, I think people have to realize that. Um, one of the other things is that, um, as was pointed out earlier, if the house were under 6,000 square feet, it wouldn't trigger this review. It would have no power. Exactly. So I think that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, if, if we could, there's a lot of material to absorb here. And I think a lot, a lot of it, I mean, I'm jumping in, but I think a lot of it begs a response. Right. Um, the, the, a number of allegations here about systems design and, uh, and, and um, other considerations that probably requires an answer. Um, it, so that whatever our decision is would be rooted in, in some sort of um, considered response to, the, to what's being put forth here. May I? Yeah. Weigh it in. Um, this is what I really think is uh, looking at this uh, overwhelming amount of um, material, um, that there are many, many concerns here. I think that this neighborhood will never be satisfied. It goes from erosion, light incursion from windows, future trees dying, having to be replanted, shadows, noise, design of the house, the lack of the harmony, the place of the house in the lot, screening, tree removal, wetland impact. And it goes on and on. I would, I am amazed that the house has not been reduced by 700 square feet. And you just move on. This seems to be, I, I'm not sure it's going to be, even if we review all of this and go over this again and again, I don't think this neighborhood will ever be satisfied. And so I don't know what we do, you know? And it seems like such an easy solution to just drop the house 700 square feet and proceed with your plans. We'll consider that, but we would like a decision from the board. I think we're entitled to a decision. The client has put a lot into it. Okay. We made substantial changes to the house. We spent a lot of money. There are a lot of people sitting here on this team. It's true, but Mr. Levy, I, I mean, we, we can't just disregard the, the material that was just dumped on our desk here. Right? We, I, I think it's going to take another week to thrash through this and, and at least <coughs> get some sense of the a week is perfectly fair. Yeah. I have a couple of things to do. One thing to ask the applicant, and you said that you had no idea what kind of blasting would be required until you start construction, but normally borings are made and you have a pretty good idea in advance what kind of uh, um, what kind of blasting, if any, would be required. So I'm a little surprised to hear that it's as much of a question as it is. So, so let me ask Jay Lavoy to to that, whatever, whatever information we have. So right now we have, uh, all we have is we have three D, three D tests on the, just on the downgrading side of the house. Um, all three of them we were able to get down anywhere from eight and a half to nine and a half feet deep. Uh, no rocks, no refusal, refuse at all. We didn't go any deep because we were doing it for the septic system at the time. Um, so as of right now, based on that data, I'm um, again no basic, no projections of, of ledge on the site itself. Um, we're not foreseeing any, any basically seeing or encountering any ledge on site, but. 
there is Weston, there's a Fieldstone wall, there is a chance to have rocks. And like, there could be just large boulders on the, on the ground that we're going to have to unearth. But right now, we're not. Nothing we've seen to date has told us that we're going to encounter a lot of legends. It just seems that it would behoove you to do more borings and deeper borings so that there are no surprises down the road. Um, so I'm kind of surprised that that hasn't been done. Um, the other thing I would say to the abutters is that um, you know they they initially reduced the size of the house by 1,700 square feet, um, and now it's 6,700 square feet. They reduced it another 700 square feet. That's not necessarily a good thing for the abutters because uh, then they can pretty much do anything they want by right. I mean, obviously they have to stay within the setbacks, but we would have no say as to any kind of landscaping that were to happen, any kind of screening, tree, uh, uh, tree removal, mm -hmm. any, any, of our, any of the criteria uh, that, that we require, no, uh, the like, how criteria, none, not none, it all goes away. So I'm just, I guess what I'm saying is that by, by not trying to work with them, you may in fact be making things worse for yourselves uh, rather than better. We have tried, we wrote to them with extensive detail and got no answer at all. I'm, I'm just saying that I just want you to be aware of what they can do, that's all. And on, the, right. same, on the same thing when you're talking about the blasting schedule, um, is, I was, my question I wrote to myself, is this just all conjecture? about the blasting, um, disturbing trees, you know, 100 feet or 200 feet away, um, is, I, that is something that if we're going to do this for next week, I'd really like to see some of the research or the documentation that, that actually has occurred, only because I have never heard this before, that um, just land disturbance from one lot will kill eventually trees I don't know how many feet away, but I'd be very interested in seeing that. Have you ever heard of anything like that, Kim? No. The, the information is in your packet. Um, if you are able to read it, and we'd be happy to provide more. The gentleman spoke um, particularly about that. Yes. During the intervening week, we can do that. But I must point out, um, since a legal claim has been made, um, we have many options, even if it were reduced. If the house still endangers, uh, the, the new house still endangers the environment. There is a lawsuit called Chapter 214, Section 7A, in which one goes to court and says, Your Honor, the environment's about to be damaged. And not on my watch is this client's area going to have tall trees falling on their house and putting their lives at risk. Not going to happen. There's a lot of things to do besides planning board review of shielding. Tony, would you give me? Is that something you intend to pursue regardless? I, I don't know. I know that the area deserves compliance with the Bible. And your board, in my opinion, respectfully, has authority to require changes until they get compliance with the Bible. Making some changes is great, but starting terribly and getting a little better doesn't mean you can't require more changes, period. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so if rough in we, my tone. If uh, we continue, I'm repeating a little bit here, but I'd like some discussion next week, some response on the blasting impact, the likelihood of blasting and the impact. I just haven't heard the response yet, that would be nice. I'm still confused about how, not how many hours a day there is a shadow, how big that shadow is. Mm -hmm. So I think I heard two different answers to that. On the one hand, I heard a small shadow, and on the other hand, I heard the whole backyard. So I'm not very interested in that. Um, the windows at night uh, slightly concern me. I'd just like to hear an answer to that. You know, does it really? We're very concerned about uh, light, skylights, right? You know, you want, what do we call them? Dark skylights. Dark skylights. Light. But yet now you have these windows that are full of lights that act like lights themselves. So it's just I would like an answer. To that. The uh, the light that's emitted through windows yeah. is is. Uh, it is much less than the light that's emitted from a single unshielded source on the outside of the building. So yeah. the, um, the, the main wall of glass that... Uh, do we, do we measure lumens that way? I mean, we add up all the lumens in the end for all the outside lights. Can we do it, or do you do it in a way? There's no, there's no way to model it, because first of all, the uh, light fixtures... No, 
Okay. We don't yes. need yes. Furthermore, in a house, there's no room except maybe for a kid doing homework or someone looking at a project in the basement, yeah. or maybe making dinner when the house would be this bright as it is here. Yeah. And the uh, the other uh, comment to make is that the the main wall of glass that faces downhill is bracketed on both sides by wings, so it's hard to see. And furthermore, the the side of the house that faces the ridges has very little glass, so there's there's no there are no glass window walls there. You know, there's uh, probably fewer windows facing that side than if it was a conventional house. So we've been very careful to locate the, the architectural components of the project in such a way that they minimize their impact. Sorry, just for the record, uh, the bridges have enormous uh, invested in this, but there are other letters and those windows um, are, are directly uh, a potential issue for us to the east. And as I offered at the last meeting, we, we said we'd be happy to meet with both of you to discuss screening options, and we did not hear from you. We sent a letter comment? and waited five months, five weeks, and got no answer. May I comment that you can just look towards Boston and see that line of sight screening does not reduce light pollution? And this Sky is a is thousand bright. square feet of light. This is a thousand square feet of windows. If you talk about a skylight, this is a thousand square feet in a pitch black conservation land area where no other lights exist. And lastly, the construction process. Right. Yeah, well, I think we could be quiet. I have a question. Is the young fellow here that uh, does blasting? Yeah. He's a civil. Oh, who was that? Who said that? Did, did, Anyway, so you said that they drilled a, a, a test hole. Okay, the if this goes through, I would uh, I would require that a seismograph. I work on projects, something like this, and they have a seismograph that they put when they start blasting or anything else. See how you know, much that shake in that area. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's part of our protocol. Okay, good. Uh, sure, more questions. Yeah. Um, one thing that's confusing about the shadows is that um, Ms. Rich mentioned that there's a two-hour difference. But when I look at the attachment that um, that Mr. Gross gave us that's based on your calculations, it looks like the maximum difference is I think, one hour and 13 minutes or one hour and 15 minutes. So again, I'm hearing, we're hearing two different things. We need facts. And the other thing is that you know both sides have very legitimate concerns, particularly the abutters. Um, but for for you to characterize that the applicant hasn't done anything, uh, or that they made minor changes when in fact they reduced the area of the house by 20 percent, they made significant massive changes to the house, they moved portions of the house. You can't you can't say that they haven't listened to you. Uh, you could say that you could say maybe they haven't listened to you enough, but they have made major changes to the house, not minor changes to the house. Uh, I didn't say they were minor changes, sir. I said that starting from a horrific place and coming in a better direction still doesn't put you in a good place. And the obligation is compliance with the bylaw, not um, just sort of a habitual, well, we'll put them through two or three sessions and then we'll slap conditions on, and that's just the way it works here. It, that's, of course, your prerogative, but from our perspective, Weston passed a bylaw, and we deserve compliance. I think people would disagree with you and, and characterize the planning board as doing that. You work terribly hard, and I don't mean to I say am, that. I am really quite interested. You work very, very hard, and yes. I've seen you give great courtesy to everyone. Thanks for walking it back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one more thing. Um, I am looking at the bibliography that was put in here, but um, these are just sort of trees. Could someone pull out and send to me the chapter and pages and verses of where your um, actual documentation is regarding blasting and uh, everything? Well, I, know it might, I, yeah, I can get that for you. Okay, because I'm not going to read eight or nine books. Because and I didn't look for a little nugget of truth. So, no, I, I didn't um, know if you they could were just pull that out, I'd really appreciate it. I didn't know if they were going to blast or not. Yeah. That was a whole slice of thing. Nothing about it, but I know that 
that could happen very easily. Well, intuitively it sounds like it might make sense, but that's not really what we're supposed to make our decisions on, as Jamie has pointed out. Yes. Susan, at the risk of sounding like I want to have the last word, which I don't, because I really do appreciate your insight and the work you're doing. We're not trying to get a thousand things on the table to have this owner change. We're trying to make adjustments that meet the bylaws. And even this whole discussion of the shadowing, the bylaw says we're feasible. You don't put shadows. It's feasible, however they want to redesign the house. If they want to make it smaller, if they want to make it bigger, but a different design. Marcus is a great architect. It's not for us to redesign this house. It's not for the planning board to dictate a design or a size. That's not what we've ever asked. All we've asked is whatever house goes up in Weston meets the bylaws, doesn't put light into the night sky, doesn't affect the view from the public trails, doesn't cause a health hazard to neighbors who have 21 trees on a hill that they're building right up to. So we're not trying to say take all our expert reports and read every sentence and change everything. I don't think anyone who's here in our neighborhood is asking for that. We're asking for reasonable accommodations not to continue to violate the bylaws, and that is within your jurisdiction. That's why the planning board exists, to my understanding. Thank you. All right. Um, any other comments or observations? In that case, I'll, um, we'll continue the hearing, John, until next Wednesday evening. Um, and I just want to, I'm just trying to think about the best time to do it. Um, why don't we, why don't we continue it to um, 8 o'clock? Let's, let's talk to them first. What Steve was just whispering to me is that it, it might be helpful. The, 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 the two sides here seem to be so far apart after all this time. I've heard people say that there's, there's been, for some reason, no cross communication. It, it, maybe that would, if that occurred, that would that might help resolve some of the standoff, but we can only suggest that we can't require it. So it would be help. Maybe it would be helpful. Uh, um, maybe maybe it's already happened. You've tried and, it, and you feel that it hasn't worked. I, for whatever reason, it might be worth trying again one more time. Uh, in any case, we'll continue until next Wednesday at eight. Thank you. Thank you.
retreat phase. I think it's really cool. The story about yeah, they manipulate the grades of the base work more counts the story. It fits us into from so every design. Team. So that's part of the that's part of the game. Yeah, you know, it's it, you just have to that's one of the reasons about why the half the height calculation is not from the final grade, it's from the grade before construction. So that at least they they pay a price in terms of the height calculation. Right. Yeah. Even though it may not count as a story of the grade. So it, it is what it is, and if they get it under six thousand square feet, you know. Ladida, you know that they're managing the average grade. It, it, it's, it's a loss balance. No, no, it's not about final grade. They have to take the net calculation. Yeah, average natural grade. I've actually done that. You know, it's about the last job field. Yes. Yeah, but in terms of the RGFA, yeah, yeah, they can manipulate so they don't have to count the base. Right. Thank you very much for your time. I, I know it's been painful. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> there. <laughs> Hi, Alice. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. Good night. No, and I, I just want to say thank you for you know sharing your story. I, I know it's hard. I used to get them once a week. Yeah. When I was actually at the ball game, just just before I came back with the graduates. Uh, for about 25 years, but it just gradually got better. Yeah, she, hers are hereditary. Her grandfather had him until he was 75. He died at 102, but he had him until he was 75. And her dad, my husband Jax, had him, he's 62 now. They're gone. But, you know. Maybe they'll disappear. Yeah. You know, that's the hope. Because when you have them, you think you're going to die. Yeah. I, I know. She had one last year with 30 days. Oh, no, that's, that's really an extreme case. Yeah, 24 seven. Sorry to hear. Sorry for falling apart. Sorry. Yeah. I understand. And we really are trying to work with them. We would love nothing better. This is fortunate. This is, I mean, it's cost us, you know, a half a year's college tuition. So it's a big strain. It's a big strain. You know, we love. They don't even say hello. Yeah. The owner just walked by and didn't say hello. So it's, it's hard to start a conversation. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night, night. Could I have a motion to adjourn, or do we have any other items on the, to discuss? I don't think so. All right. Well, that's all the tape. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank